Okay, let's look now at hydrogen bonds. A hydrogen bond is going to be between oxygen and hydrogen, but I want to backtrack a little bit. This is our water molecule that we talked about already. Okay, and we said that within this water molecule is covalent bonding. Why? Because the hydrogen bonding to the oxygen is done so in a covalent way. They're sharing, right? I'll share one, you share the other. This is covalent bonding happening here in one water molecule. But now let's think of a bunch of water molecules. You've got lots of them. You've got this water bottle, and in there there's a lot of water molecules. And this is a picture showing them. So they're all floating around in there. Well, they're not completely isolated. They actually form a bond. And that is between, let's look down here, between an oxygen, the red here, and a hydrogen, one of the hydrogens. And we're going to indicate it with a dotted line. So that shows that there's some sort of attraction there, and it's attraction because of the polarity, right? You have one end of the molecule that's more negative, one end that's more positive, and therefore there's this pull, this force between always the oxygen and the hydrogen between two separate molecules of water. So now look at it here in this big picture. This is going to happen over and over again. You're going to have the oxygen here to this hydrogen, and you're going to have this hydrogen to that oxygen, and that hydrogen to this oxygen, and some of them are not going to be bonded, and they're going to bond and rearrange and separate and bond and rearrange, and then you spill your water bottle, and it beads up on your table, that water. Why is it beading up? Because these molecules are attracted to each other, and they form a little bubble, sort of. Right? It doesn't mean that you can't squash it and separate it, but that attraction between those molecules is there. Those are hydrogen bonds. A very cool thing about them is that you can see insects taking, using that, right? Look at this. Insects can walk on water. We used to call them Jesus bugs, just to laugh at this. So what happens is that those molecules of water, they're not just separate. You don't sink between them. Why? Because they have this connection uh, that's that attraction, which is a bond, between those molecules. And it's sort of making a little film, a little surface that this insect can actually step on. So what kind of bond was that? Hydrogen. That's a hydrogen. Within one molecule of water, covalent. Many molecules between each other, hydrogen. Okay, one last one we're going to look at is the ionic bond. Okay, the ionic bond forms when one atom gives up one or more electrons to another atom. So it's not sharing any longer. It's not saying, okay, here you borrow one and, I, and I'll supply the other one. No, it's like you take it. It's gone. So the classic example we always give is table salt, sodium chloride. So sodium chloride here has, in its valence shell, one extra one. Chlorine in its valence shell is missing one. So it would be easy for this molecule then to just donate this one, have this one be completed, this orbital complete to eight, and this one, get rid of that lone electron in that outer orbital that's needing seven more, which is very complicated to get. So what happens is that this sodium actually sort of donates it off. And because it's lost an electron, it gains, it's lost a negative. So it ends up being slightly positive. The chlorine gained a negative, so it's slightly negative. So these two are attracted to each other because positive is attracted to negative. So they kind of hang out together. See what's happening? Now, if you put table salt, sodium chloride, in water, it breaks that bond, right? Those are going to just separate out, and then you're going to have sodium floating around with chlorine floating around because it's going to interact with the water. But if you just have it outside, not in solution, outside of water, those two kind of hang out together. And that is your classic table salt. Right, so that was an ionic bond. 
It's a really good cartoon on this. You have atom A has a, a weaker pole, but this one's his electron. This one, atom B, has a stronger pull, but that was his electron. Well, in this fight of tug of war here, because there is an electronegativity difference, meaning strength difference of pull, this blue one's going to win out. He's going to end up with both. And this one has lost that electron. And he ends up with a positive charge. The one that gained a negative electron is going to have a negative charge. Okay, so this is sodium chloride, classic example, ionic bond. Okay, we're going to stop there.